Welcome back. In this section, we're going to continue looking at the natural logarithmic function, uh, this time through the lens of integration. Uh, so first things first, we had from the previous section that the derivative of natural log of x absoluted was 1 over x. Um, so that gives us the antiderivative for 1 over x finally. So remember back in the day when we were looking at the antiderivatives for x's to powers, uh, we had a power rule that worked for every x except for x to the power of negative 1. We didn't have an antiderivative for 1 over x. Uh, well, now we do. It's natural log of x, so that's good for us. Um, natural log of absolute value of x, we really should say, unless we have reason to believe that whatever is going inside this natural log is something that's positive. Um, so, for example, if x was a time measurement, time after zero seconds, um, then maybe in that case I'd say, well, then there's no need to have the absolute value. Or if there was some sort of expression inside of here that was an always positive expression, then maybe I wouldn't need the absolute value either. Um, but in general, we'll be looking at functions like 1 over x. Their antiderivative will be a natural log of absolute value of x. Uh, also, we know from before when we were using chain rule, if we had natural log of some function of x, then we would get that function in the denominator and that function's derivative in the numerator. Um, so when we see that kind of a pattern, when we see something like a function in the denominator with its derivative in the numerator, we're going to get some sort of a natural log out of the deal and we'll do a substitution. We will substitute and let our new variable represent that entire denominator um, so that our differential will be replaced by whatever was in the numerator. So let's get ourselves started with some, some nice uh, indefinite integrals. And I'll start with a, a nice straightforward one. Um, this is not quite 1 over x, but it's close enough to it that would make us think that some sort of a logarithm was going to pop out of this. Um, and in fact, I'm going to start off by doing a little bit of a substitution to make it more obvious that we are going to get a logarithm. I'll start off by saying let u be my denominator, and so du is the derivative of this times the differential dx. Um, so I don't quite have 2dx, I've got 3dx, but of course you can always take the 3 out. And if I wanted to make it 2dx, I could multiply and also divide by 2. And so that means that I could now substitute and say that what I really have is 3 halves integral of... 1 over 2x minus 1 would be 1 over u, and the 2dx, that is my du. Um, so 3 halves, 1 over u du, indefinite integral, that would be 3 halves natural log of absolute value of u, plus my constant c. Um, and then I'll just do my little back substitution and say 3 halves natural log of absolute value of 2x minus 7. And in this case, 2x minus 7 is not something that's always positive, so I do definitely need to have those absolute values there. And that's going to be the same sort of thing I'm going to do for the next couple of these. We're going to notice a little substitution that I can do to clean things up, and then once I've done my substitution, um, I'll have a little bit of a, a log coming up as my uh, indefinite integral. Okay, let's do another one. We've got this function that's a rational function. Um, and we said that before in the previous section, that a lot of rational functions, when we integrate them, a log will pop out of it. And we'll see that in action here. If you're looking at your denominator, x cubed minus 3x squared, its derivative is close to what the numerator is. So if we were to have u being all of x cubed minus 3x squared, um, then du would be 3x squared minus 6x dx. Um, I want to also point out here, this is a nice time to do another approach to this. When we did the first example, I modified my integral, taking 3 out and multiplying and dividing top and bottom by 2 so that I could have the correct replacement for, for, for du. Of course, we can also do the modification here. I mean... I have 3x squared minus 6x dx equals to du, and so if I multiplied both sides of the equation by one-third, I could say one-third du should be x squared minus 2x dx. And so now I've got exactly the replacement that I need. So I, I can do my substitution and say that um, I will now have, for the numerator, 
I will have a, a du, and in the denominator, I will have a u. So I'll have now one third du, the one third I'll take outside, and one over u du. So the denominator was replaced by u. The entire numerator was replaced by one third du. We took the one third outside. And now antiderivative of one over u is natural log of absolute value of u. And then I can go backwards and say that I have one third natural log of absolute value of x cubed minus three x squared plus c. Okay, let's do a couple more. Um, this one, again, once we do a few of these, we start to notice the pattern. I, I have something in the bottom, and I can see its derivative is exactly there in the top. Um, so if I were to let u be x squared uh, plus 1, then du would be exactly my numerator, 2x dx. Uh, so this would be just 1 over u du. And the antiderivative would just be natural log of absolute value of u. And then I can go backwards and substitute in and say I have natural log of absolute value of one uh, of x squared plus 1 plus c. Uh, for this one, though, I can go one step further. I notice, I mean, for sure, x squared is always positive. It's 0 or larger, which means x squared plus 1 is always going to be 1 or larger, which means that those absolute value signs aren't really needed. So I can just say it's actually just natural log of x squared plus 1. No need for the absolute value. Okay, one more on this page. We've got a trig function going on here. And again, we're always looking for substitutions to do when we're looking at integrating. Um, and I can see for the denominator, 3 secant x plus 2, its derivative would be 3 secant tangent, which is almost what I have in the numerator. So again, a pretty obvious substitution here. I'd say I'm going to let u be my denominator. And so du is 3 secant tangent dx. Um, and I can do either modifying my little relationship with differentials here or just modify my integral. Um, so I could, if I wanted to, make 3 secant x tan x happen in the numerator if I also multiplied outside by a third. Uh, so that means that I would have in my numerator... I would just have du, and in the denominator, I would just have u. So it's just integral 1, one third 1 over u du, which gives me 1 third natural log of absolute value of u. And then, of course, going backwards, natural log of absolute value of u becomes natural log of 3 secant plus 2. And for this one, of course, the, the absolute values are important, and that's because uh, uh, secant certainly can be negative. Okay, this one looks a little bit spicy, doesn't it? We've got all sorts of things going on. I have an x cube going inside of a log, and that log is being raised to a power of 4. And then I've got this other little stray x hanging out here in the denominator. Um, just as I'm taking a look at this, I mean, you might notice on the side, or you might little, do a little bit of work on the side and notice that if you were thinking about natural log of x cubed, that as far as the derivative goes, um, it's actually not that hard to find because after I do a little log property, I can see that the derivative really should just be the same as that for 3 times natural log of x, which is 3 over x. So in a way, I have a function, the natural log of x cubed, and I almost have its derivative, the 1 over x that I've got going on there. So um, that's kind of pointing to the sort of substitution that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to say to myself, for my substitution, I'm going to have u be natural log of x cubed. which is the same thing as 3 times natural log of x. Um, so that means for du, it would be 3 times 1 over x dx. Uh, or in other words, that 1 third du 
would be 1 over x dx. So then for my integral, the 1 third, I'll take that outside of my integral, the 1 third du is replacing the 1 over x and the dx, so the 1 over x and the dx is being replaced by my du, and this natural log of x cubed that's in the denominator is going to really be replaced with a u that's in the denominator. That natural log was raised to the power of 4, so u is raised to the power of 4. And so there we go. I've got really, after I do my substitution, 1 third, 1 over u to the 4 du. And then now that's just going to be a power rule. I know we got on the, the train of it's always logs all the time. And of course, in this one case, it's not a log. It's u to a power. Um, so I know for power rule that I would need to add 1 to the power and divide by the power. And then a little bit of cleaning up after that. Um, so the 3 and the 3 become 9, so I'll have minus 1 ninth u cubed in the denominator. And then, of course, last thing I can do is um, turn my u back into the log that it was, which was natural log of x cubed. And there we go. So we've got negative 1 over 9 natural log of x cubed cubed plus c as our, our final result here. Okay, another one. This one's sort of same kind of an idea as the previous one. We notice that we have something, natural log of x, and that same something's derivative, 1 over x. So this one, I think the substitution is sort of more obvious, which we would choose, that natural log of x should be my u, so du is um, 1 over x dx, which means that what I get for my indefinite integral, the 1 over x dx is all replaced with du. The natural log in the denominator is now a u in the denominator, so I've got a 1 over u du, or natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And natural log of u, uh, sorry, natural log of u is the same thing as natural log of natural log of x. So here we've got a log inside of a log, um, and that is our, our indefinite integral, natural log of absolute value of natural log of x plus c. Okay, we'll do just a, a couple others, and then we'll, we'll have ourselves a bit of a pause. Um, so this is a rational function, and we've seen one like this before. We saw this actually back in 4.1, and back then I said that there was no quotient rule. Um, so what we might consider doing is doing a little bit of division on the side. And so that's what I'm going to do here, uh, because I know that after I divide x minus 1 into x cubed, plus 3x squared, minus 5x plus 3, that whatever I get for quotient and remainder, I can use that to rewrite that rational expression. So that's my plan here. I'm going to say that I've got myself my function, I'm dividing into it, and away we go. So x goes into x cubed, x squared times, we multiply x squared times x, x squared times minus 1, we then subtract, x cubes are gone, 3x squared minus negative x squared is 4x squared, and then I'll bring down the next term, and then we just continue the practice of dividing. So x into 4x squared, that's 4x. We multiply 4x squared minus 4x. I'll subtract, and I'll have a minus x left over bring down the 3, divide x into negative x goes minus 1 times, we multiply, and then finally I subtract, and I'll have 2 as my remainder. So the thing that we've learned is that our little rational expression that we have, uh, after we divide it, it can be written as our quotient, 
plus our remainder over our divisor. So this little rational expression that we just found could be turned into our quotient, x squared plus 4x minus 1, plus our remainder of 2 over whatever it was we were dividing by, which is x minus 1. So we wind up getting a little bit of a polynomial plus a little rational function at the very end of it all. Um, and now we take it from something that was not really possible to something that's very possible. Uh, for sure, we know what to find for all of these. I can say antiderivative of x is x cubed over 3. For 4x, it would be 4x squared over 2. And for minus 1, it would be minus x. Um, for the last one, if you need to do a substitution for it, you certainly can. I mean, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of x. It's probably not a big leap to figure out that an natural log of x minus 1 would be an antiderivative for 1 over x minus 1. Um, if you needed to, though, you could always do uh, this separately with a little substitution, letting u be x minus 1, du would be dx, and then everything would sort of unravel nicely from there. Uh, but anyhow, at any rate, we've now got our final result, 1x, 1 third x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 2 natural log of absolute of x minus 1 plus c. Okay, um, this one's probably, I think, the, the hardest of all the ones that we've seen so far. And the reason why this one is quite difficult is because um, the integrand does not quite have everything that we need yet for us to do whatever substitution we might hope to do. Um, so if we're looking at this, I mean, I've got a square root that's in the denominator, and that's kind of not super nice. Um, if I didn't have the plus 1 there, it wouldn't be a big deal. If I just had 1 over square root of x, then that's really just x to a power, and I, I could use power rule. But it's this 1 plus square root of x that's kind of wrecking things for me. So, I mean, I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the side and, and note to myself, if I were to try to replace that denominator with u... Um, then I run into a big problem right away because for the derivative of 1 plus root of x, derivative of 1 is nothing, but the derivative of root of x is 1 over 2 root x dx. Um, and that's kind of my problem here. I, I don't have a 2 root x in the denominator to get uh, along with the dx to have something replaced with du. Um, so this is now a moment where we do a little, well, what if kind of a moment. I mean, I certainly could make the 2 root x happen in the denominator, right? I mean, that's not impossible to do. I could just multiply top and bottom by 2 root x. So, I mean, that is sort of fixing a little bit of a problem. Um, so the 1 plus root of x, I mean, I could replace that with u. The 2 at root x in the denominator with the dx, that's going to be replaced with the du. But then the question is, what's going to happen with the 2x that's in the numerator? So I have something to replace everybody that's in the denominator. I don't have anything to replace stuff that's in the numerator. Uh, and this is where I'm going to make a little bit of a note to myself. Um, I have this relationship between u's and square root of x's, and that also could be rephrased as square root of x is u minus 1. Um, so actually, in a way, I do have something to replace for everybody. I'm going to say for the denominator, the 1 plus square root of x, we're going to replace that with u. The 2 root x in the denominator with the dx, that is being replaced by du. And then in the numerator, I have 2 times square root of x, and we just said square root of x is the same thing as u minus 1. So really what I've got is the indefinite integral of 2 times u minus 1 over u, or 2u minus 2 over u. And I could clean that up a little bit. I could split that actually into two separate fractions. I'd have 2u over u, which is just 2, minus 2 over u. And now I've got something that's really nice. Um, I can say that, well, for the first term, it's just going to be 2u. And for the second term, it's 2 times natural log of u plus my constant c. Um, and at that point, now I can go backwards. I can say, well, I've got 2 times 1 plus square root of x 
minus 2 natural log of absolute of 1 plus square root of x plus constant c. Um, there is one little last thing, I guess, that I should mention about all of this, and I'm just going to move this over here a little bit so I've got a little more room. If you were to clean this up further, you would have 2 plus 2 root x minus 2 natural log of absolute value of 1 plus x square rooted plus c. Uh, now, if you were to go on to your favorite computer program that solves integrals. So if you went to whichever website you like to go to, Desmos or Wolfram Alpha, um, you'll notice that it's not going to give you exactly the same answer that I found here. In fact, that the two that I have at the very beginning will be absent. Um, and you might say to yourself, oh no, Chetto has made a mistake because that clearly is not the right answer because Wolfram Alpha or Desmos said so. Uh, but I'm going to point out something here and here's my little clever moment. I'm going to call my little constant of integration C1 just for now. Uh, and so now I'm going to explain where Wolfram Alpha and Desmos get their answer from. I'm going to say that 2 plus C1, I mean 2 is a constant, C1 is a constant. I'm going to just replace that with a brand new constant it's called just C. So really my equation that I get at the end is 2 root x minus 2 natural log of 1 plus root of x plus just plain old constant c. Um, you will see that technique happen frequently. So for anyone who has a differential equations class in their future, um, you'll see this happening where constants get globbed together and absorbed together into a, a brand new constant. Um, that's a pretty common thing that you'll find in lots of upper year math classes.